Brothers, it's good to be able to spend a few moments uh, with you, and I've, I've been asked by the fraternity to uh, bring you up to date, talk a little bit about uh, the creation, the writing of the Credo of Zeta Beta Tau. Uh, I was an undergraduate member uh, of the fraternity. I was chapter president in 1963 and attended what was this, the National Convention in San Francisco. Uh, and like, I suppose, every other delegate uh, that attended that convention, I went to have a good time to meet ZBTs from around the country uh, and to talk, share some ideas about what other chapters were doing and to enjoy the great city of San Francisco. Uh, I didn't think that I would get involved in anything that was going to be very serious. Uh, was, frankly, as I said, it was just going to be a fun, fraternal activity. That's what I assumed was going to happen. Within a day or two, of my arrival, I was approached by the president of Delta Chapter at Columbia University, and he said, Jim, would you be willing to join a, a small group of uh, other chapter presidents? We've got some serious issues affecting the fraternity, and we'd like to get a group of people together from as many different kinds, sections of the country, and different kinds of chapters as possible. And I said, sure. We arranged a time for the following day. <clears throat> And when I gathered uh, in a, one of the suites, uh, one of the national officer suites at the hotel, uh, I was pleased but surprised to learn that there were about a dozen of us, chapter presidents, or start out being about a dozen, chapter presidents from, from different sized chapters, uh, different kinds of chapters, different parts of the country. And the topic that was introduced to us was the question of the relevance of fraternity today. Now, mind you, this is 1963. Who would have thought that anybody needed to talk about the relevance of fraternities in 1963? For all the world to know, these were still the solid days of fraternity. It was extremely popular to be a fraternity man, to be a sorority woman on, on most American college campuses that period of time. And one wouldn't have thought that there was any need to think in terms of whether or not the Greek system was relevant. But that was the topic, that was the question that was, was put to us. And with it, we began to share what was going on already in our country uh, that, would, that was pointing the finger towards radical change in the American society. Most people, when they think of the 60s, they think of the late 60s and the early 70s, the troubled time of the Vietnam War, uh, the campus unrest that took place all over uh, the country. But actually, those dramatic changes started hitting our society in the late 50s and in the early 60s. John Kennedy was elected president of the United States in 1960. He was a Roman Catholic, an unheard of thing. His very election pointed to uh, an enormous shift in the attitude of the American people. College students, people our own age, were in the South registering voters uh, because the, the political systems in the southern states were preventing that from happening. And they were spending, college students were spending their summer vacations, their spring breaks, and so on, taking buses down to the southern states to make sure that everybody who wanted to vote uh, was, was, was registered. The American public was becoming very restless, uh, discouraged by the international situation and uh, the United States' role uh, in, in geopolitical conflicts all, all, all over the world. Uh, and all of these things, there was already a, a free speech movement at Berkeley, the University of California at Berkeley, where students were beginning to object seriously to the status quo uh, and the seeming apathy on the part of the university to address serious social issues and poverty in America, for example, and again, uh, the racism that continued to exist in certain elements of our society. And we felt that somehow ZBT needed to make a clear statement make a statement to the world, to, to our community, the world we lived in, the university campuses, to our alumni, <clears throat> to our fellow members, that ZBT and fraternity, that brotherhood, stood for something that was indeed relevant, that was universal, that extended in every condition, and that ZBT had something to offer even in these changing times, these American changing times. And so we set about to create our thoughts. And uh, it all boiled down, when we, were all, when we were done with it, it all boiled down to the fact that we believed that fraternity, like the university, the liberal arts university, had a role in shaping people for citizenship, for social responsibility, for what we call brotherly love, and what, that is a mutual caring uh, for each other in our society, uh, for integrity, that these were the principles that we, we tried to put together uh, in a simple statement. When we knew what it was that we wanted to say, 
we ask uh, a brilliant young uh, CBT alumnus, an attorney from New York, who was about to be elected national president for attorney, to join us and help us to put it in the kind of language that, that uh, would somehow make sense. And he did. And he worked with us, and, we were, and what, we, what came out of that was what we thought at the time was just going to be a simple resolution of the convention. A statement, but a statement of the convention. And it was first only known as Resolution 17 of the 1963 National Convention. It immediately became popular, and in short order, the Supreme Council styled it the credo of Zeta Beta Tau. And that's what it's been known ever since. Now, this was not done without some objection. There were those in the fraternity that ridiculed our efforts, that said that uh, this isn't, fraternity shouldn't be in the business of making these kinds of statements. It robs us of our legitimacy uh, as a social organization. People will giggle uh, and make fun of us for getting serious. That's not what fraternity is all about. But, in the fake, but there were more in our brotherhood, both at the undergraduate and at the alumni level, who said, no, this is absolutely the right thing to do, and we're, we're not going to be persuaded by the naysayers. So it did take some courage, uh, and, and, but, it, but it survived. And not only did it survive, but it became an extremely important statement during the terrible years that faced fraternity in the late 60s and the early 70s, when people wondered if the Greek system was going to survive it at all. It was often the one statement that our own undergraduates looked to, sometimes even more so than, the, than, than our ritual, something that they could hang their hat on, that they could feel good about, that, that clearly said for them what they wanted to say themselves uh, about the, the true meaning of Zeta Beta Tau and the true uh, consequences of a brotherhood, of a college fraternity in the midst of the times that they lived and that, that all of us live. And that's the story of the credo of Zeta Beta Tau. And now, 51 years later, it still continues to be an essential statement of what we believe as an organization and as a brotherhood.